Hey guys, hope you're doing well this evening. Just wanted to talk about Tesla for a few minutes over here. So we hit a new high on Tesla today at 649.88 after they issued 5 billion in new stock, which is kind of absurd. But either way, whether you're a bull or a bear, it's very intriguing to watch this stock as it does continue to, to defy logic. And I want to analyze the expected moves for the next few weeks as we approach the S&P 500 inclusion date, which is December 21st. So looking out to December 11th option expiration, the expected move for this coming Friday, which is three days away, is 40 bucks in either direction. So the upside would be around 690 uh, off the chart. You can't even see it here. The downside would be around 610. So back down to where it was a couple days ago. Uh, looking out to December 18th, we're looking at an upside of $96, which would take us to $746 approximately, and a downside move of um, $96 as well, down to $554 or so. The following week is the S&P 500 inclusion week, um, but keep in mind that is a short week, so we have um, Christmas Eve and day as well, so we'll only have uh, three and a half trading days that week, right? So the uh, OPEX for that week is very, very short. However, the IV is very high for that date as well, right? And the option market is pricing in a move of $118 in other direction. So upside 768, again, off the chart. Downside 542, so somewhere around here, right? In this, in this area right here. Now, I'm looking at January OPEX to take a short position on Tesla because I do believe that the catalyst of them being added to the S&P will have passed by, obviously, on the 21st. And after January 1st, you're going to see a lot of profit taking to defer taxes into the following year. Um, the current um, daily moves being implied by the options market are about 6% or so. And I want to show you the, um, the actual option price or the, the volatility pricing right now in the market. So you can see on this little chart right here. This charts the volatility for different expirations over time. Over the past six months, the December 18th OPEX has never been more expensive. So if you are buying contracts, calls or puts for next Friday, you're paying an extreme premium for those contracts, right? Um, looking at the January or February OPEXs, you're paying less premium comparatively, but still pretty high premium overall. So let's look at some strategies right now to, to see how we can play Tesla depending on your thesis. And again, I'm bearish on it right now because I do believe the valuation's out of whack. Uh, it's run up from 450 or so up to now um, 650 or so in the past month or, uh, roughly. And I do believe it is slated for a sharp pullback back down to the 450 area in the next month or so. So looking at the option chain, which is over here, we can see that um, if you are bearish, um, such as myself, then uh, I, would, I would focus on a longer term expiration date and I would use spreads, uh, namely looking at butterfly put spreads. Now, if you're not familiar with butterfly put spreads, um, the way they work is essentially they combine a debit spread and a credit spread wherein the middle strike is the same. So what you do is you go long, for example, if I wanted to, to um, do a butterfly put spread here, I'd want to go out of the money probably because my thesis would be, would be that Tesla will fall below uh, 500 by January 15th. So I would go long the 500 strike put. I would go short the 400 strike put over here, right? And then I would go long the 350 strike put. Um, in this case, I'm actually creating a broken wing butterfly just to ensure that if it breaks the downside and doesn't push uh, below 350, or if it, if it pushes below 350, I'm still walking with a profit. So you're, you're going long one contract of the 500 strike puts, you're going short two contracts of the 400 strike puts, and you're going long one of the 350 strike puts. Your net debit is about $10 or so, or $1,000 per contract, and your maximum upside is $9,000 or 90 bucks per contract. So you have about nine to one risk reward over here, right? And basically, um, the th thesis being that it will be below 500 come January the 15th, right? Now, that might be far-fetched or, or seem far-fetched to some of you guys. 
and that's fair, obviously. I'm just speaking my mind over here and, and take it with a grain of salt, you know, right? But look at the option uh, premiums right now for out of the money versus, versus um, uh, on the calls versus the puts. So looking at December 18th OPEX, which is only um, nine days away, this is kind of funny. You can see that the um, thousand strike calls are going for about two bucks or so. So that's an upside of about 350 from the current price. If you go down to the, to the 300 strike puts, which are uh, equidistant from the current price of the downside, you can see the extreme skew here, right? The, the, the puts over here are only about 10, 15 cents. So on the put side, you're paying a fraction of the, of the cost of the call side, even though they're equidistant apart from the, from the current price. So if you go up 350 to, to 1,000, you're paying about two bucks for the calls. If you go down 350 from the current price to 300, you're paying about 15 cents. And that carries forth to the January OPEX as well. You can see that the puts here are about $2.30 roughly at, at, at midpoint. On the call side, at a thousand strike, you're paying about $12. So right now this tells me that people are paying absurd premiums on the call side, hoping that it goes higher and higher and higher. Once that game stops for a few weeks, the gamma will flip back to the downside and all the, all the premiums on the calls will, get, will, will be crushed very rapidly. Now, again, I mentioned, you know, if, if, you're, if you're bullish on it, obviously, if you want to play the bull side, I would suggest using call spreads again because the premiums are very rich right now. And if you go just long calls, if any kind of pullback or, or stagnance for a few days or IV crush and your position will get decimated, right? So just a little idea for if you're, if you're bullish, um, you might want to go with perhaps a 700, 800 call spread perhaps, right? And again, the risk reward, in my opinion, isn't that favorable. You know, if, if you're buying the 700 call, selling the, the uh, 800 call over here, you're still risking about 25 bucks or so per contract, and your upside is 75. So three to one risk reward, but it, uh, your break even is at 725, and your maximum profit is above 800, right? Now, uh, I, I mentioned a bearish call already and a bullish call. Now I'll do one for the Theta Yang as well. So if you want to take advantage of the high implied volatility right now and play that into the January OPEX, you can again go way out of the money. So for example, you might go to the 1,000 strike, sell that call, buy the 1,020 uh, call, right? Create a call spread, a bear call spread. And then go to the downside as well, go down to the roughly 400 area. This is assuming that you believe it'll, it'll remain stagnant, right? And you, you sell that put over here, and then you'd buy the 380 put. So you're creating a 20 wide um, spread, uh, and it's an, it's, it's an iron condor over here, and your credit is about you know $2 or so at midpoint. Your maximum risk is 18. Uh, for, maximum risk, for maximum loss to be achieved, it has to be below 380 or above 1,020 at expiration, right? And again, the idea here is that you're trying to capture the, the high premiums of the volatility right now, the high IV, and wait for the contraction to occur after perhaps the event of S&P inclusion. So if you have any questions at all, just post them below. I know this can be confusing for, for some of you guys. Um, this is, these, these are more advanced topics. But uh, any questions you have below, I'll respond to. And if you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe. I appreciate that as well. And have a great night.